Michelle Cauley, and today I'm going to be talking to you about power tool safety and in specific this miter saw right here. So grab your safety glasses and your hearing protection and let's get started. Okay, so now that we're ready to get started, uh, first take a look at yourself. So is your hair tied back? Are your earrings dangly or are necklaces or hoodie strings? If so, then get rid of those. You don't want them tangling with the blade or any of your wood or your hands. Um, also, keep in mind your clothing. It should be fairly reasonably well fitted so it doesn't dangle and hang into the saw. And then think about where your mind's at. Um, are you super tired because you have a new baby? Or um, have you had a really long day? Are you drunk? Are you high? All these things are not good times to be using any power tools. Um, so otherwise, if you're sober and cleaned up and ready to go, then we can move on to the actual saw. Check your saw for proper function before you use it. Raise and drop the guard a couple times to see if the spring works. Move the slides so that they move smoothly. Adjust the miter base, see that it can move and there's no debris. Then check the electrical cord, see that there's no breaks or kinks in it. Look at the dust collection bag, make sure it's not overflowing. And look at the, the bevel lock and tilt and see that it moves slowly and locks properly. Newer models of miter saws come with guard lines on the base plate. These handy guides let you know the safe place to put your hand when you're cutting your wood. Keep the hand that's not operating the saw outside of these lines, including your thumbs, and this will keep your hand safe. So just to clarify about those guard lines, uh, when you're cutting a piece of wood, it's important to choose a uh, stock that's long enough that your hands can't reach that saw blade. So anything six inches or shorter, you're better off finding a longer piece to cut from. So if you have a piece like this that's four inches, um, just throw it away and get something else. It's just not worth the risk to your fingers having them that close to, to, the blade, to the saw. Because in order to cut this piece, you have to be hanging on to it with one hand. And it's just too close to the saw blade. So choose something like this or longer before you uh, bring it to the saw. So when you buy a, a miter saw, it won't come with a stand unless you buy that separately. And where that's important is when you go to set up to cut. So if you have a piece of wood that hangs off the edge, if you don't build yourself some kind of catch for that piece, it could potentially fall and therefore pinch the blade when it cuts and um, possibly throw your wood. So it's important to make yourself or set yourself up with a proper stand or catch for that wood or get something like this guy that actually is made to support the wood and keep it from pinching on that blade. So you know your saw is safe and good to go and you're ready to cut your wood, so what next? Well, there's a few things. So in order to cut this wood and keep it from doing anything unexpected, you first need to make sure that your wood is tight to the back fence and supported along its length, which we just talked about uh, in the previous section of the video. The other thing is that with this blade, it is sharp, but it's not razor sharp. And the, it's not going to cut the wood until it's up to speed and you, when you're pressing that trigger. So if it's not up to speed, what will happen is the teeth will catch on the wood instead of actually cutting it, which can throw it and make it jump unexpectedly. Um, the other thing to watch for is if the wood isn't properly supported and it collapses as you're cutting, then it pinches the blade, which then means the blade isn't spinning as fast as it needs to spin in order to cut the wood, which therefore means that the wood will get grabbed and thrown instead of getting cut. So it sounds scary, but really all you have to make sure is that your wood is properly supported against the back fence and also that this blade is up to speed, which means you don't start pressing this trigger while it's touching the wood. So make sure you start the trigger when it's off of the wood. When marking your wood for cutting, use an X on the side of the line where the blade of the saw will be to make sure that you don't cut your, your piece of wood too short.
set myself up for my cut. After I draw my line, my left hand guides the wood until the line is close to the blade and I hold the blade close to the surface of the wood while doing that. Then I move my hand to the safe zone, lift the blade slightly off the wood and make the cut. So I hope you found today's video helpful and I hope it gives you confidence to give it a try yourself. Um, don't be afraid of these tools, they are tools and they're meant to help you and they do. They're very functional, very useful. Uh, just keep your hands clear of the blades and those guard uh, lines and be aware of what you're cutting and, and yourself and you should be good to go. Take care.